Today we're going to take a look at some coins that I found at a recent show from a dealer that deals uh, specifically with uh, foreign coins. And so um, let's jump right in. He has a bin of coins that are from uh, Europe or Canada, uh, other places with a currency similar to ours, where he'll just pretty much say pay face value for them. And so with that, I got this um, 50 euro cent from a country that we don't see quite as often, Luxembourg, or in their language, Letzburg, from 2009. Yeah, you don't see the 50 euro cents all that often, and you don't see Lux Luxembourg all that often, so I still had it. So I'm <laughs> not sure if I would have bought it if it weren't for that, but... There you go. Uh, I also got from him a Panamanian coin. They do peg their currency to the United States currency. So a, uh, a decimo of a Balboa is worth one dime of a dollar from the United States. Not particularly rare, but for, for 10 cents, I'll uh, be happy to pick that up. Uh, and then, so that's 60 cents right there. I decided to get another eight Canadian nickels. Or they're not all made of nickel, but uh, all Canadian five cent pieces. So there's eight of them here. I thought these would make some pretty good trade pieces. As it turns out, there was another dealer that day that I bought a mystery lot and got just a huge pile of Canadian five cent coins. And so maybe it wasn't worth buying these. But just to go through some of these, uh, this one's from 1956, an older version, still with the, the, the first portrait of Queen Elizabeth. This is, comes from the time when they were still, I believe that is 12 sided, 1960 on that one. This one's kind of all scratched up, but it has George the fifth, the sixth on it. And this one is round. It's not 12 sided like the last one. But then here's one with Queen Elizabeth that is round. So a little bit newer, 1963, than the two that were 12-sided. And so following World War II, this is their Victory Tomback coin. Tomback is the metal that they call uh, brass, I believe. Or I should say, say we call it brass, they call it Tomback. So this is a one or two year commemorative coin following World War II. So we've got George VI again. So that side probably isn't any different than the beaver side, but we've got the large V with the flame inside of it. So you don't see that one quite as often. But then they also had... As we continue with different versions here, these are all from about the same time. Apparently the actual metal nickel was maybe still rare at the time. And so they made some of their nickels out of chromium plated steel, which I don't know how many other places in the world use chromium for a metal. But what happens when you have that is it, it has kind of a weird shininess to it. And then it also wears down pretty easy where it looks kind of junky underneath and the steel on this one uh, kind of gets a, a rusty look to it. So it almost looks like a coin that has been plated to make it look nicer, but done a long time ago. And instead what you get are these older coins that just uh, really haven't been plated. It's just the, the chromium, the chrome finish to them was so thin that it wears down pretty good. So here's the uh, another Victory coin one year after the last one. This one's 1944, so that Tomback one was 1943. And then on this one, it, it started to wear on the, uh, the portrait just a little bit. But there we go with the Beaver design again in 1952. And then one from 1953 with Queen Elizabeth. So lots of different varieties in some of the older uh, Canadian five cent coins from around a little bit after World War II days. 
uh, this dealer had a bin of $1 coins and that were all in flips. And then he had a deal that if you bought 10 or if you bought uh, 12, uh, two of them would be free. So you'd pay $10. And so I was going through and I, uh, there were a couple I was unsure about. I ended up putting them back and then wish I hadn't because I could have just gotten another couple more and gotten them free. So uh, I was a little bit disappointed about that. Uh, one of them was not in the flip uh, is this East German commemorative coin featuring Ernest Tallman. And so apparently he was the first, uh, he was a leader of the Communist Party in uh, East Germany. On this 20 mark. So the coin itself dates to 1971 has an A mint mark for Berlin. I'd never seen that coin before. Then we get to the ones that are in flips. I believe this is the only silver coin that I picked up. You don't see a lot uh, in a dollar bin, but it this is a South African three pence. Back when they were still pegged to the British uh, currency, as they're ruled by the British. 3D means three pence dated 1940. At this point, there is still 80% silver, so that has a silver weight of 0 0.0363. And there's your portrait of uh, George VI on there. So, silver-wise, that's worth about 75 cents worth of silver. So, uh, I think that makes it worth it to pay a dollar to get that coin. Going to move to a Greek coin. This one is a 50 drachma. Drachma. When I was going through my calendar, I looked and thought, oh, I, no, I already have this coin. As it turns out, there is a subtle difference in 1982. The coin I had, instead of saying drachma, it says drachmas. And I had a viewer of this channel a couple of years ago leave me a comment saying that drachma was kind of a formal way of uh, calling the coin and then changing it to drachmas was a uh, more commoner, uh, that the, the way that the people actually used it back then. So they updated the coin, uh, the currency to reflect that. But this one's came with 124. And when this guy labels things, he labels lots of things on here. So we've got... Uh, the year, the country, Greece, Republic, it's the 50 drachma. He's going to call this extra fine condition. He puts the mintage on here. So uh, using the uh, European style of 32 million would have the, the period for the million. And uh, copper nickel for the metal. Showing a bunch of waves on here. And then on this side, uh, this uh, portrait is Solon the Archon of Athens. Some of the Greek coins have people I am familiar with, but not Solon. Next dollar coin is going to be from uh, Uruguay. It's going to be the um, 100 new pesos. He's going to call this brilliant uncirculated. Uh, this one features Gaucho. Who I, I guess is someone important in the Uruguay history. Minage of, uh, this time it's got a comma, so maybe 35,000 of these, maybe. Stainless steel on the metal. Even had the date of the Uruguay Republic from 1976 through 92. At one point, maybe the end for new was taken off of here, but uh, this coin is dated 1989. We'll move on to and the coin made out, made out of iron for World War I. It's going to be from Poland and a one Fenig coin. This one has the uh, mint mark on here twice with the FF written here. It's on either side kind of underneath the, the eagle talons on here. So the F is listed on here twice. 
The FF means that it was uh, minted in uh, uh, Stuttgart, Germany. And so it has a catalog number of Y4, so it's one of the first things that you find in the Polish catalog. And so uh, my catalog has a note. This was a World War I occupation coin made by the German-Austrian Regency. So uh, oftentimes you get the, uh, the coins made out of iron from World War I. They usually do look pretty rusty like this one. So uh, tricky to find those in uh, better condition. So we're going to move to a uh, not geld coin. If it's your first time to see a not geld coin, this dates back to the time between uh, World War I to World War II, where the German mint uh, were having trouble keeping up with demand for coins. And a lot of localities made their own coins. Now, when uh, paper money was made, they were almost made to be collector's items. And you'll also find a lot of the coins will have uh, designs that feature prominent things in the locality. So this one is uh, going to be five one hundredths of a mark. I don't know why they just didn't say five finig on something like this, but every locality had their own reason for doing what they were going to do. So uh, the words written around here translate from German into English to say coined with the permission of the Senate. Uh, specifically, I believe this was made for the German region of Hamburg. And then I also made, uh, wrote a note on here how it says, uh, I guess the Verchung's mark means an accounting mark. So that's the, uh, the label here underneath the, the dom denomination. So then here's where it says uh, Hamburg Bank. So to find, to finding um, these not geld coins are not easy. And to find them for a dollar, and that's usually pretty good. There's a couple that I found enough that I wouldn't pay a dollar for it, but almost all not geld coined, I would pay a dollar for them as long as they weren't just in all beaten up condition. The coin catalog that documents all of these is the Funk catalog, where this would be coin number 637.2. There is one other coin that I, I bought from this dealer that he'll have some under his case in these super big flips. This one comes from the, uh, the Portugal-controlled Azores. He had written uh, Portugal Republic on it, but this one... Uh, in my catalog was found under the, uh, how do you pronounce that, Azores, Azores, I'm not sure, uh, uncirculated MS-63. Uh, I don't know where he got that cam number because mine says 46, and only, um, I don't know if that's a thousand or a million, so these aren't as common, but it's a copper nickel coin, 360, so he had it, he did have it priced just as the catalog said. Antero de Quintal. So kind of a neat portrait there. Lots of detail. Must have lived from 1842 to 1891. And even has a signature up uh, to the side of his forehead. So that's kind of neat. Don't know anything about this person. Here's where it says uh, Republic of Portuguese and Azores, 100 escados. You got the outstretched hand uh, in front of the sun, date of 1991. And then the Portuguese um, crest there on the back. Uh, I got another dealer where I bought exactly one coin from, so I thought I'd just go ahead and add it to this video. Pretty well worn for a newer coin. 
This is from the West African states. So a lot of countries that were at one point controlled by the French, once they were no longer controlled by the French, they decided to keep a common currency and uh, call themselves the West African states. There may be other places in uh, Africa that did the same thing. This one's going to be the 500 francs on a bimetallic coin. And this one's going to be KM15. And so they abbreviate their, it to, I guess, specify it's not a French franc or from other countries. They abbreviate it with the FCFA logo in here. So I guess it says Union, Monetary Union of West Africa on the outer ring of this bimetallic coin. And I'm not going to be able to translate that. I've always wondered what the symbol was that appears on a lot of these coins. I just assumed that was some kind of uh, representation of an animal, but it actually goes back to some of the earliest African money where they would use this particular item as a scale so you could weigh uh, certain things having to do with uh, uh, precious metals or whatnot. So that's what uh, this symbol is that appears on a lot of the West African coins. All right, that's all for today's video. Thanks for watching. Bye.